Hello, this is Bern, and today I'm going to show you how to set boundaries in a way that attracts, inspires, and compels quality men to pursue you and commit to you and why you might be unknowingly repelling awesome men based on how you're setting these boundaries. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If you'd like to learn how to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now to be notified of new episodes as they come out. If you've been seeking a heart fulfilling, a spiritually transformative, uh, sexually explosive, the works basically in terms of relationship and you've not been able to create it. And part of the challenge is when you put yourself out there and go on dates or you enter a relationship, you feel like you can't get your needs expressed, like you're constantly being disrespected, that you're being ignored, that you're being passed over, then the most common reason for that is not setting boundaries in a way that's healthy. There are two twin forces that are absolutely needed in any relationship that's going to stand the test of time and is going to feel fulfilling to you. And those two are, number one, vulnerability, because without vulnerability, you can't really express your wants, your needs, you can't be seen, you can't be self-expressed, you can't experience depth and intimacy without vulnerability. And the second force is, you guessed it, boundaries. Because if you don't have boundaries, then when you express your vulnerable self, you'll be met with pain. You'll be met with disrespect. You'll be met with something that feels as a violation to your health or your being. The challenge that I have found time and time and time again in helping so many women find love is that most men and women set boundaries in ways that are very unhealthy and do not know a fundamental, simple, classy, clear, direct way of setting boundaries in a way that can get you much more of what you want. So what I'm about to show you right now is first identifying if you can see yourself in one of these seven unhealthy slash toxic ways of expressing boundaries, because if you're expressing boundaries these ways, chances are the greatest guys you're connecting with are being pushed away and you're not getting a chance you're not really giving them a chance to step up and be there for you because of how you're expressing your needs or not expressing them. And then the second part of this will be simple technique, simple way of expressing your needs so that you can identify if the guy that you're expressing them to can step up to the plate or not. And if he can't step up to the plate and it's something that's fundamental to your well-being, that you can clearly unequivocally say, I'm moving on instead of holding on to that relationship or relationship for months or years in ways that just make your self-esteem and your self-worth plummet to the ground. The first method, and I'm calling it a method because I want to make this fun for you, that human beings, and in this case women, since I'm talking to women right now, express a boundary that is unhealthy is what I call the ostrich method or the avoidant method. Now, by definition, this is not expressing a boundary. Ostrich method is you put your head in the sand and you imagine that something's not happening or you hope that it's going to change or worse, you're going to hope that he's going to read your mind and perhaps understand that what he's doing, what he's saying, what he's stepping into is hurting you or making you feel a certain way. The reason why I'm starting with this one is because most human beings, as I shared, fall into different categories, either expressing boundaries in ways that are so punchy and so hurtful that you destroy your opponent and your opponent has wants nothing to do with you or is going to charge you that pain with interest in actions or you don't share them at all. And the first one falls into the place of you're not sharing a boundary at all. You're hoping for things to change on their own. You're hoping for things to get better without necessarily having the courage, having the clarity and having the self-worth to express what you want. Second one is what I call the ice queen method. The ice queen method is expressing a boundary, not by being clear and direct and specific, but by acting distant, by acting pissed, by acting cold, by acting as if you don't care. So instead of saying, here's what's happening, here's what I need, here's can we make this work, can you step into this, you simply address, attempt to set a boundary by acting in a way that wants to manipulate your partner or the guy you're dating into 
feeling guilt, into feeling pain, into feeling jealousy, into feeling anything other than well-being, so that maybe he can change his actions. It's a way of punishing the person in front of you through your distance, through your coldness, through your reclusion, with the hopes that that boundary, and I'm calling it boundary loosely because it's not really a boundary, but many human beings step into this behavior confusing it as boundaries. So if that's you, if this is you who's stepping into this, I'm not going to talk to this person, I'm, not, I'm going to ignore the text messages, I'm going to take five more hours to respond because I'm punishing him because of what he did and he doesn't even know what he did, then I'm challenging you right now to change this today. Number three is what I call the revenge method. The revenge method is, again, another indirect way of attempting to set a boundary that is passive-aggressive. That means that you're upset because maybe he is late or maybe he talked to someone and you thought he was flirting with her. And instead of being just maybe aloof or cold, you come up with comments that are meant to hurt him. Maybe you are sarcastic. Maybe you joke about him in front of his friends. Maybe you do something that you know is going to really punch him in the nuts metaphorically, hoping that it gets his attention. And again, it doesn't have to be something that's just a cold behavior. It could be a warm behavior that actually gets him, that pushes his buttons, that makes him start to go a little bit insane <laughs> and hoping that that's going to get you more of what you want. Now, before I go into methods four through seven and beyond how to actually set the healthy boundary, I want to invite you, if you're a single woman watching this video right now, my hypothesis is you don't fully understand right now the real reason, the root cause of why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken more than a decade, 12 years of helping women find love in every city you can imagine, with every love challenge you can imagine, and put it into a quiz that you can take in 60 seconds or less. And it will tell you, if you take this quiz, what's the number one reason why you're still single. All you have to do if you want to find your answer is go to the link on the description of this video, the first link. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in the next 60 seconds, you'll have two things. Number one, the number one reason why you're still single, not the symptom, but the root cause, and then a report that shows you, based on your specific challenge, what is the number one thing you can do today to turn the tables around and attract the man you want. Number four is the puritanical method, and that's where you address him as a creep for wanting to progress faster than you do. Now, let's get this straight. There's no room for a guy to touch you in a way you don't want to be touched without your consent, or to be sexual with you in a way that you don't want to. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a guy who may be sending you a text that's suggestive in nature, or a guy who's inviting you to his house when it's too early, or a guy who says, hey, let's go on a trip, and it's just super early, it's not called for, but instead of addressing it in a way where you say, thanks, but no thanks, you act as if the guy is a creep. Now, again, I'm making a clear distinction between the guy who really crosses the line and actually goes to touch you inappropriately, or, or is just really creepy, versus the guy who has sexual needs, sexual urges, and he may be delusional in thinking that they can happen sooner, but there's a way to address it and give him a chance to step up. Now, not all guys will step up. Some guys will say, I can't do this, and I, unless we have sex, then I'm out. Cool, let him go. But if a guy says, you know what, I'm sorry, I want to do better, and yes, I'm willing to put in the work before we go there, then a simple, non-confrontational, like, no thanks, I appreciate, I'm flattered, and here's what I need with a guy, not even just with you, with a guy, in order to be able to go the distance physically, sexually, then that might give him the ammunition he needs to step up and become a better suitor for you. Number five is what I call the character destroyer method. And that is when somebody shares something with you that violates your wants, your needs, or your boundaries. And instead of addressing the specific situation, you address him as if he is a flawed human being that should not be worthy of this earth or you. Now, there's obviously a range of experiences that can provide more or less effusiveness in expressing your dislike for what they did. Take it as a principle that when you dislike 
the guy's behavior, do not attack his character because it's really challenging for him to A, do something about the character versus a specific thing that's really called for right now, it might create a defensive mechanism where if you're attacking his character versus his actions, he might not want to continue connecting with you, he might think that you're too closed off, or he might simply want to create a pissing contest of the kind that will just get this relationship spiraling or this dating process spiraling into a negative place that's really uncalled for. Number six is what I call the verbal vomit method of stating a boundary. And that's when sometimes if you maybe have really bad experiences before, or you're someone who's been abused in the past, or someone who has had guys disrespect her, or maybe this guy has done multiple things and you have failed to show up with courage and say, please stop doing this. That means that you let it sit and you either react to the 20 other guys before him that did something and he's basically just paying the price for all of them, or maybe 20 things he said to you that you failed to address and now you're basically going to erupt like the Mauna Loa volcano and really let him have a verbal vomit, uh, almost like a punch left and right, head, heart, and nuts because of something that's such just like an overreaction, more words than are called for, uh, insults, uh, things that really are not setting a boundary, they're just attacking somebody's integrity, they're attacking somebody's uh, character, they are getting you the opposite of what you want. You might feel liberated because you get to express so much, but if you need to express that much with that one human being, there's probably something wrong either on the relationship or on the things you're expressing. Number seven is what I call the now that you're bringing this up method. And this one is particularly shady because this is where you don't set boundaries. You don't state what you want. You don't express your needs. But when the guy expresses the boundary, you take that opportunity to bring up shit you should have brought up time and time again. So it's not that you shouldn't bring it up, it's you shouldn't bring it up when he's bringing up a boundary. Answering a boundary with a boundary is not the right thing to do. Answering a boundary with clarity is the thing to do. So what do we do and how do we change this? There's two fundamental things you're going to need to be able to pull the next very simple expression off. The first one is understand what your feelings are more consistently. That means that when you're dating, when you're entering a relationship, when you're in a long-term relationship, you're going to constantly ask yourself the question, what am I feeling? If you fail to ask that question and you tend to push your emotions down, then that's where something can really build up, build up to where there's an explosion or where you don't even want to address it. You just act, exit the relationship without giving it a chance. The second one is what are your needs? Understand what your needs are based on those feelings. If you feel a certain way, well, what, what can you do with that? How can, in a very practical, very specific way, the person you're connecting with address it so that things can get better? Okay, so there's three specific parts to setting a boundary in a healthy, direct way. And let me share something with you. Men understand, appreciate, and crave directness and non-fluffiness. Like, t remove the drama, remove the extra fillers, and simply state it this way. The first one is, here's what I remember happening. And it's important to say, here's what I remember happening, because you might not remember it accurately. You might remember shit that didn't really happen, but the intensity in that moment made you basically say, so you don't want to say you did this, it's, here's what I remember happening. It's more humble and it's more true to what might actually have happened, right? There's, there's what he thinks happened, what you think happened, and then reality, and it's not always the same. The second one is, here's how I felt. And this is why it's so important for you to understand how you're feeling and ask yourself that question constantly because if you can't express your true feelings, if you only say, I am pissed, and that's as far as you go, and you're really feeling hurt or scared or insecure, and you don't go there, you're not activating in this guy the ability and the capacity for him to do more to solve it. He might do something about you being pissed. He's going to do a lot more if you're not just pissed, but you're pissed and hurt, and that's true, and you share it. That's vulnerability, and that gives him a chance to step up. The third thing is, this is what would make me feel better. Can you please? Would you please? That's it. Simple. Three steps. What happens when you state a boundary this way? A, you're not accusing him or his character. You're basically saying, here's what I recollect took place. Number two is you're expressing the specific way you felt so he understands that his actions 
are having a specific effect in your well-being. And third is, what specifically, practically, actionably can this man do, other than just hear you out, to make it better? Whether it's something in the future, whether it's an apology, whatever it is, just ask for something clear. Now, when you share boundaries this way, this doesn't guarantee that the guy will step up. It does guarantee that guys who are good quality will be far more likely to take your needs into account and to do something about them. And guys who can't step up or who are incompatible with you can more clearly without less fuss or game say, I can't do this, which means you win. Because now you can move forward and connect with someone who can meet your needs at a higher level. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful if it is. And you'd like to understand why you're still single, go to the first link in the description of this video. If you like this video, click like or thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and share this with a friend who needs to hear this, please. And last but not least, if you're hearing this and you understand that this is powerful, but you want hand-holding and accountability and guidance and specific help from me, then second link in the description will allow you to apply to work with me. Thank you so much for connecting with me, allowing me into your heart, into your home, into your phone, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.